Hello, Lori Papo here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a babushka egg, or as I call them, baba eggs. We're going to first start out by dividing our baba egg into six sections. We need these six sections for any size egg, whether ostrich, goose, chicken. If you need a more detailed explanation, please see my video on how to measure and divide an egg. At this point, you can see I have all my horizontal lines and all my vertical lines on each of the shells, even the little parakeet egg. Next, we will be working with circles. I'll be using the chicken egg to show where we're going to place our circle. These will be our circles, the faces, and our little girl eggs. We want to place them a little bit higher, and we want them to be a little bit bigger. We want the girl's face to be the main focus here, a happy face. Here we have our vertical lines and our horizontal lines, and we're getting ready to make our circles. And on my eggs, I like to move the face up. So this here would be, say, like her forehead. So to do that, I just measured another line up here. And I do like to have my faces to be about one and an eighth inch. Here's the middle line down here. Looking at the measurements here and here, right here would be our center point. So this is where we would decide to make our circle, right in this area. I want the circle to be one and a fourth inches, I've marked this off. And then to find the halfway mark again, I bend the paper, mark that off. Here's that center point. I'm just going to lay my paper down and again start marking around. This time, we're going in a circle. The measurement I have on this paper is actually one and a fourth inch. And the reason is because I allowed an eighth of an inch for the uh, scarf going around uh, the little girl's face. Now as you can see as this circle is being made that would be quite a big face on the chicken egg. But what I want to do now, again I have it measured off, is I want to now make an inner circle of an eighth inch. This here will be the scarf area. So again I will go around in this circle, and this will make the circle for the little girl's face. Another way that this can be done, and this here is a really handy, neat trick that my friend Carolyn has taught us, and it's to use suction cups. Carolyn has taken these suction cups that she has purchased from Walmart and she has marked them off 
And this here's a perfect little gadget to be able to make circles just like that. So here are two different ways to make your circles for the face. I've finished all my circles for my faces. As you can see, this is my quail egg and my parakeet egg. What I have done at this point, as you can see, I have my circle and my inner circle for the face. Then I made a little circle down here and little ties. This is the, the tie on my scarf. I also put a band around to separate the head part and the body part. As you can see on this side, I have started work on the blouse. This is the sleeve and the hand. And to get these, I measured by finding my midway mark on this panel. And then from there, I also divide that. Now this is our, the mark that we need to make our line up to the knot. So we will make our line, decide where the middle is, take the tape measure and mark off a fourth inch. Some folks like to have a ruffle on their sleeve, so you can make a little ruffle. For the sleeve, we will move over a panel, find the midway mark there, and then we will extend a line going down to the hand again from the midway mark we will bring this one up we will do the same thing with the back of the sleeve and you can decide if you want to make it rounder or if, or if it's pointy here in the back if that's okay this is your little girl's blouse I have made a braid on the back And again, this was with finding my midway mark and just bringing the hair down. I can bring it down like this. I can make a bit of a circle here. You can design your hair in different ways. You can just leave this a solid color or you can start making marks in here with your wax of a different color so that it looks like a braid. If you want you can put a ribbon you can design how your uh, either braid or ponytail will be, or you, you don't even have to put
put hair if you don't want. You can just leave the back just a plain color. Also, if you would like a wider blouse, you can extend your blouse. This is all up to you on how you want your girl, your egg to be. Now, what I wanted to show you is how, because I'm not good at uh, drawing faces, I have come up with a grid that I use to make the eyes and the mouth. But the first thing I do is I decide on how I want the hair to be. So over here I've taken the hair and just made a swag on either side. The same width when that was done, now I've made a grid in this area to be the area I will work on the eyes. And further down, it will be the mouth. So with the eyes in my uh, grid, I have these areas that I'm going to decide that that's how wide I want the eyes to be, each one. I will begin in the middle of this rectangle that I've marked off and come up. I don't want the eyes to be completely round. So again, we have the middle of this rectangle. I will bring my line up and then continue on all sides here. I may have to work with them later on, but this is how I start out. And for the mouth, I take a look and see about where the eyes are going to end up and then I try to match this up with the mouth going down. There are better ways of doing this but this is the way I have taught myself and is easier for me. With the eyes I will also, now I have a form there, I will make a circle inside the form so that our eyes really look like eyes. And for the mouth, you can make a heart shape. You can just make a big smile this is entirely up to you on, on how you want your face to look. I've started the work on the girls' faces from the littlest ones. I've worked on their little faces. Right now they all look like raccoons. Back to our ostrich egg. I have put in the white areas on the eyes because the eggshell is white right now. I went ahead and worked on the sleeve of her blouse. This is the area that will remain white also. What I will be using for her face will be orange dye. I poured off some orange dye into a little cup so that I could use either a paintbrush or a Q-tip. To work on the face of the egg, so all I would do is just start putting the orange around. We don't want to put it on the eye, in the eye area. We will put another color there.
You can also use a very soft pink to do this. Some areas, as you can see, take faster than others. We just want that little bit of coloring for the face. And if, if some areas get a little darker than others, we can always take a little bit of water and try to, to smooth that out. Right now, this bottom area is a little bit lighter than the top area, and, and I would like it to blend a little bit more. So again, you just play with it. It just takes a matter of seconds. So we have this part done. What we would do next is take a blue or green or brown depending on what color eye shade we want and we just fill in the eye area I like to let it just sit and well up and, and dry so it's a nice dark color. I can also take a little bit of pink and work on um, either the lips or on the cheeks here. I'm using a, a Q-tip for this part here because we, we uh, want to go more in a circle for the cheeks. Because I made my pencil lines dark, so you can see them in the video, they are showing through the dye. But when you do your A, be sure to lightly make your lines and the dye will easily cover them. And again, as I said before, you can play with the coloring and, and so that it all blends in nicely. You can make it as dark or as light as you want. And if you don't like the results at this time, you can always clean all this off with soap and water and start again. There are several ways of doing this but I find it is easier just to use black India ink for the fine details in the eye area. I have here just a little bit of the India ink that I put on this piece of uh, wax paper. I'm going to use a toothpick. Let's get a little bit of the ink on the toothpick here and just go around the edge of the eye. And of course we try to make these as thin lines as we can.
when this dries, now I will wax in all this area and it'll be time for me to begin all my artwork on the rest of the eggshell. Don't forget to do the hands. Again using the orange. After you have waxed in the face and hands, now it's time to begin penciling in your designs for her scarf, sleeves, and dress. Then apply the wax and dyes just like you would for a regular Ukrainian style egg. And if you need help with the basics of how to work with wax and dyes on eggs, please see my beginner Pisanki video on YouTube. Work has begun on the quail egg. As you can see, her face is completely covered. Also, as you can see, I have a glob of wax that's not supposed to be there. The first thing I will try to do to remove the wax is find a sharp object. I could use my fingernail, but I choose to use a razor. And I will get underneath the wax and just slice it off. I will try and clean up as much as I can with the razor. My next step to make sure that I really do get all the wax off, I try to use goof off. I take the goof off and I put it on a toothpick that has been wrapped in a tissue. And I just put a little bit on the top there and just take that goof off and clean all around in that area. And find a little dry spot with my tissue and clean it off. The goof off will dry and I can continue my work, which were supposed to be three little dots instead of a glob of wax. If you can see, there are little bumpy wax marks here. What happens many times with these bumps? They get knocked off and I have found that when they do, when you re take the wax off later, you have a white mark where that piece of wax was. What I've been doing when I see these bumps, I just take my tool, lay it sideways, it's heated, lay it sideways and just kind of roll over those bumpy marks. This way here they don't get bumped and taken off the egg, leaving the white spots. I can choose to do different hair. This one here has lines, stripes, or lines. I can decide on whatever design I want for her scarf, sleeve, her skirt. So many wonderful ideas that you can use. Keeping it simple or intricate. Even the front of her blouse. So many different ideas that can be used. Oh, one more thing. I was going to also tell you that not only you can you do these type of faces. If you want to, you can change 
This is my little Cherokee girl. She has the little white rose. And this is another Indian style egg. This is the Lady of Corn. As you can see, we have the corn here. So you can use the eggs to do all types of faces. If you happen to have brown eggs, then this is one step for the face and the hands that will be taken care of for you. You won't have to use the orange dye. What I'd like to point out is that sometimes when you remove the wax and if you had put the India ink for the eyes at the beginning, some of the ink may have come off. And if so, then it's just time again just to take your toothpick and just apply it or reapply it. Or for some people, they might want to wait until the wax is removed, then do the, this part. Another way to work on the eyes is also to use a brush, a very small brush and this here is a makeup brush eyeliner brush all of our work is done on all of our eggs this is the ostrich egg with her pretty scarf her detailed sleeve her hair in the back and her skirt at the bottom With each egg, we can change the designs and the colors, as you can see, with our next egg. This size is the goose egg.